So guys, here is the 2017 Z51 base package Corvette. This has the 1LT package, which is standard, with the basic Z51 package, which gives you a few things. The first thing that all of you that saw the Grand Sport video are noticing is obviously this car is much narrower. It's a total of three inches narrower, an inch and a half on each side. Smaller tire, smaller footprint, all that good stuff. This is your entry level car, if you wanna call it that. It's still a really nice looking car. This I will be honest with you guys, when this car first was developed, I actually didn't like the way it looked because I thought that it looked too much like the Coquette in Grand Theft Auto. But then part of me just started liking the car more and more the more I saw it. And of course, with black wheels, dark gray, it kind of looks, you know, same paint scheme as my Mustang. It kind of grows on you even more. This one being an automatic, I could take it or leave it. But, but for somebody that drives into DC, for example, from the Virginia area, it's a pretty good ride and it would probably serve them quite well. This one took me a little while to get around to doing. I was gonna do a cruise hatchback, but unfortunately we took that vehicle to the mall and put it in the mall, so I can't do that car. So I guess we have to settle for a Corvette video. But yeah, so let's do the walk around and then we'll look at the inside, the engine, the back end of it, and we'll take it for a drive. So let's go. As we walk up on it, you can see that it does have the black wheel package, which gives you 19 inch wheels in the front, 20 inch in the back. This has the upgraded Brembo brakes. As you can see, it has the slotted rotors. I'm trying not to get too close because the engine's running. And it's finished off in a really, really nice gray, dark, dark gray. Coming around to the back here, you'll see it's got the standard quad tips and the standard lighting. The Z06s have clear lenses versus the Stingrays, which do not. This one has a just standard wing. There is actually a smaller wing that's available. This, this is just the wing that's standard on the Z51 package. You could upgrade this and add the Z06 style wings if you like, as well as ground effects and all that stuff. Roof is body color on this one. It is not black or transparent like some of them can be. So this is the 6.2 liter Corvette LT1 makes 465 horsepower in this application. Fits in there much better than the supercharged engine did, as you can see, all that room in there. Fans are on because they are, go figure, uh, just to make it louder and harder for me to talk. But as you can see, it's quite accessible for checking oil and making sure that your belts are in good shape. Most guys that own vets don't do their own maintenance on brand new ones. They are usually the guys that are doing maintenance on C3s and C4s. So, yeah. So, here's the window sticker. My guys always tear them. I don't know why. And, you know, it's kind of annoying to me. As you can see, this vehicle is rated for 19 overall, 15 city, but 26 highway. That's what an 8-speed transmission will do for you. By having basically two overdrives in it, it allows it to get good gas mileage. Uh, so this vehicle, unlike the Z06, is not subject to the gas guzzler tax. At $63,665, it's expensive, but not as expensive as it could be. I've seen some Stingrays with the Z51 package, you know, where you're talking the higher end versions of it, but I've seen them crack 75 grand for a Stingray. And luckily this one is way less than that. And of course there are a couple of small rebates. If you're a Corvette owner already, you can get a rebate of like two grand. So then you're talking 61 and obviously we'll sell it a little bit cheaper. So basically you could get like the transmission and the black wheels at no cost kind of a thing. There's all, all kinds of ways to make a deal better. I don't know what your dealerships in your areas are willing to do, but I know what we would do. This car has, again, just the two options packages, which was the eight-speed paddle shift transmission, which was $1,752. That's a weird number. And then $495 for the black wheels. It's not a bad price for the wheels because you get 1920s. I think the stock base wheels are 1919. Correct me if I'm wrong. I like the interior on this car, so I'm going to grab the camera now, swip it around, and we will take a look at it. So, as I was saying, these are the GT bucket seats. So they're just your regular seats. They're not the upgraded option seats or anything like that. I like this color. I don't know why. It really works with the darker color of the car. These seats are pretty nice. 
The touchscreen here, you have all your standard stuff, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, projection, you, as long as you connect a USB cable to that, you can then uh, display whatever you want here in the center console, which again, I mean, that's kind of darn small, but you do have a big honking uh, drive shaft tunnel running underneath here. But you have room for a cell phone, a wallet, whatever you need to. Couple of cup holders, which are very important in American cars apparently. Take note, Lexus. Power port. And then, of course, you have your drive mode selector, which is, you know, track mode, sport mode, touring mode, eco mode. That's how you get the best gas mileage, obviously. And then weather. So, traction control button, you can turn that off. This center console, excuse me, the center um, display can show you different things like this one shows you your what the limited slip differential is doing. Just leave it with just a tachometer, which is kind of pretty much where I would always leave it. Your G meter, G display, zero to 60 timer, lap timer, oil temperature, oil pressure, battery voltage, trans fluid temp. You can see that I really didn't do anything to heat it up at all. Uh, horsepower, show you how much power you're using at any individual individual time. But again, I would just leave it like that, personally. Uh, speedo on that side where it should be, out of the way for when you're driving the vehicle. You have your fuel gauge as well as your temp gauge there. Again, flat bottom wheel. Gives you just that little bit extra room. If it was completely round, it could potentially interfere a little bit, I guess. One thing that's pretty cool is on the vets of course your passenger climate control because of the way that this is designed to be more driver centric you can't really just kind of get a good position on it when you're in the passenger side so the passenger has its own controls over there looking into the back not a whole lot looks like the front plate bracket sitting back there some floor mats and a couple of other things because it is a hatchback, it does give you enough room to carry bags and groceries, things like that. So technically, you could use this vehicle as an everyday car. So yeah, let's go for a drive, see what you guys think. Okay then, let's do it. All right, so now we're on the drive. Sorry if you're kind of tilted at an angle. I'm doing the best I can with the uh, windshield mount that I have that isn't working anymore. I gotta repair it. But this car has the regular base seats. It does have the ceramic gray. Is that what this is called? Ceramic gray? Let's see, interior, interior, interior. Just says GT Buckets Leather. Where the hell's the color of it? It says gray. They're gray, but I think it's like a ceramic color, but I, I like it. It really works with the darker gray of the outside of the car. Now, you can put the shifter in manual mode and then it will hold the gear until you shift. Or if you're doing some manual shifting yourself while the car's in drive, then it kind of indicates that it's in manual mode. But if you want to hold a gear, you have to actually physically pull the shifter down into the M. The one downside I have with paddle shift automatics and paddle shifted cars in general is it just feels like a dang video game. You know, is that a bad thing? Not really, but it could lead to some overzealous driving. And these shifters don't sound very good. I mean, you heard that when I shifted, right? You know, so it's not, it's not as engaging as a manual. And I'm sorry to say that, but in my opinion, that's what it is. Here goes an acceleration for you. I'm stuck in traffic, so I can't go bananas with the car, but it, it just goes. Uh, that's what happens when you have 46, uh, excuse me, 460 horsepower in a 3,300 pound car. So yeah, this one has no extra features outside of the eight speed transmission and the black wheels that are on it. Other than that, this car is bone stock base 1LT trim Z51. So, What do I think about digital tachometers? They're fine, whatever. This one actually seems to have a little bit of a delay in the display, but that could be because I'm so used to dang video games that I'm just noticing it. Could be that I'm insane, who knows room is a lot better than I was expecting. I'm not like tucked up underneath the dashboard, but I'm also not braced up against it while I'm in a comfortable seating position. So I like that. Suspension, I gotta say it rides really nice. It's not terribly different from my Mustang, to be honest with you, since I lowered the suspension in that. Handling, of course, it's 
a friggin Corvette, I point it, it goes. Engine note, I really do like it. Uh, it sounds really loud, really nice. Because this has the Z51 package on it, it does have the bimodal exhaust or the multi-mode exhaust on it. So that's why it's louder under full acceleration and when you're in sport mode than it would be in under normal, regular driving modes. Fit and finish inside the car, pretty good. I'm not complaining about anything. It feels nice. The materials still feel a little plasticky like on top of the center console. But again, this is a base model Stingray Z51. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have a trouble saying that uh, it's a base model when you're talking about a 60-some thousand dollar vehicle. It's the entry level Z51, so I don't recall if there's a better material for the upmarket Z51s because I've not spent any time in them. But controls are right here, kind of the Chevy standard controls, so it's not hard to work the car. You obviously have your speedo on the left side, you have your voice controls and center screen on the right side. The screen for the radio, this being a 2017, it has the nicer setup. I never spend a whole lot of time with the old Q system or the old touchscreen system, mainly because at that time I was working for Ford and we had our wonderful Sync My Touch. But I really kind of like this setup. I do like that this one has physical knobs for the climate controls. I kind of like that little incremental controls, even though it displays what you're doing on the screen. I just like having that to use. Don't know why, it's just a little thing for me. Flat bottom steering wheel gives you that little bit of extra room for your legs. But again, at 6'4", you can see I've actually got fair headroom in here. Shifts right when you want it to. It's basically when I would be shifting if I was running the manumatic shifters. This does have the upgraded brakes. I haven't driven a car with the standard brakes yet, but these upgraded brakes feel really nice in this car. Not the quietest car when you're on the road, but I can live with that. That's not a huge bother to me. You hear a lot of like, I just ran over a gravel set, so it's a little bit, little bit annoying, but not terribly. So guys, here we are. We're back at the dealership. I wanna thank Manassas Chevrolet for letting me use the car, especially since, you know, they didn't have to. They could have said, no, you're not allowed to drive it. But they did let me take this one out. Um, I'm going to let it sit back here and run and burn off the uh, build grease and all that stuff that's on her. If you have any questions, leave them down below. If you have any comments, leave those down below. If you haven't subscribed, please do. I do apologize that this video came out a little bit later than I planned on today, but I was doing some things with my employees. So, yeah. Talk to you later.